Coffee. Mm. Well, today I'm here to talk about this this device. This is called uh, an endoscope or boroscope. You can see it's a big long mess of wire with a couple of bits on it. And in this video I'll be showing you some um, internals of spider burrows, which is what I use this for. So I thought I'd just discuss it a little bit. You might want to buy one. I've, I posted a little video yesterday and a number of people have said they're going to go and buy one. I thought oh, I might just do a little sort of a basic review of it so you don't go buy something that you don't, you don't want. Or you might want to think about it a bit more. This one is, I got it off of eBay. I'll put a link to the one that I purchased, but there's lots of sellers that come from China, of course. This one's five meters long, which is really overkill. I don't know why I bought five meters. I don't know. Um, I think I paid about $32 for this one, including post. Um, if they're shorter, they cost less. So it's an endoscope, endo, internal scope camera internal camera for looking inside places it's probably originally designed for things like um, um, you know, pipe inside pipes and inside tight places where there could be some sort of a, a fault or a problem and technicians need to get in there and figure out what it is um, but of course we don't use it for silly things like that we use it for looking for uh, looking at what's in the spider hole which is um, far more uh, sensible so on the end this part here this is where the camera is located the camera is located in the very end and there's a series of LEDs in the very end as well as, as a light source. Now this end part here appears to be made out of probably an aluminium tube. So it's rigid. It's completely rigid and it's about, I don't know, what is it? 30, it's about, I'd say that it's 40 millimeters. It's actually 40 millimeters long this part here and it's as I said it's rigid which can cause problems now the rest of that is is, is partially it's flexible but it's partially rigid so if you bend it like that it stays it stays bent it's fairly rigid it's fairly hard to to move it to stop it you know you've got to push pretty hard to get it to bend which is necessary because you don't want to put it into a, a tight spot and it hits the slightest resistance and then bends, that would, that would be useless. So in some ways it's a sort of a catch-22. The problem is that once it's down inside a place, you have no real control over this thing apart from pushing it backwards and forwards and you can turn it. So obviously if it was like that and then I twisted it from the other end, I could do that by twisting it. So there is some degree of movement. It takes a bit of practice. Um, the other thing about it is that you don't know which way is up. So when you've got it down inside the hole, you don't actually know is the, this is the top of the picture or this picture, top of the picture might be on the side or that side or that side. So it's a little bit difficult. It wouldn't be a bad idea to actually figure that out and then draw a line along it. So when you've got it out of the burrow, you know which way is up and that way you know how to turn it. But anyway, so yeah, you just get it and you, and you feed it down. If the burrow had a slight curve in it, you might think, okay, well, I'll try and follow that shape. So you might you might put a bend in it like that, and then you might come in square like that into the hole, and then you'll, you can sort of feed it down like that. But as I said, it, um, it has a restriction with bends. If it hits a hard bend, it'll, 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 to stick it won't, it won't actually go around the bend so far anyway not in dirt it'll just dig into the into the side wall of the burrow and also the edges of this are quite sharp so possibly get a little file and maybe try and make it a bit rounded off but I don't know how much that would help so this is the cable okay this one's five meters like I say silly this end of the cable this is what this plugs into this device, which I'll talk about in a minute. You've got this little control. It has a wheel on it here, and that wheel controls the LED brightness 
on the end. Okay, so I'll just plug it in. I've got to figure out which one's which here. Cam, plug it in to this little device, turn it on. No lights come on on it. <clears throat> and where's my camera? Okay, so there you can see the LEDs. And if I turn the wheel on here, you can see the LEDs go out. So they, there's really just a, it's a bit odd, really, isn't it? I mean, it's sort of on or off, but you can see it goes brighter. That's uh, no, that's right. It's better than I uh, was remembering. But basically, what happens is you've you've got to have it fairly much fully bright to work. I found if you turn it down, there might be some situations where turning it down is beneficial. Uh, maybe to develop um, detail, there could be too much contrast or too much brightness in some situations. I use it on full bright. Okay, internal battery. You charge it up by plugging it into USB. It um, hasn't gone flat on me yet. I think I've been using it for probably about an hour or so. And um, yeah, it's quite good. Now, this is Wi-Fi. So you have to have a Wi-Fi device, a phone. I use my iPad, download free software. And fire up the software, the application. You connect your phone, iPad, whatever it is, to this via Wi-Fi. You select this device, and simple comes up on your phone screen, your iPad screen. You can see what this sees, and um, which makes it field um, field useful. You can, you can take it out into the field with you. It's quite mobile. You don't need a proper computer or anything. You don't need a desktop computer or a laptop. You just need a, a mobile device, an iPad or a, or a phone. And um, you hit record on the screen and you can record. Could be more straightforward. Very, very simple. So, so I'm going to go over everything. Low, it's low res. I wanted to mention that. Okay, so I think it's about 320 pixels. I can't remember now. You'll see the details when you look up the, the length that I'll leave. So it's not high res. It's not going to give you great... You know, image quality, um, but for the price of it, it does. It's still very, very useful, um, and it'll tell you what's in the burrow pretty much, and you'll, you'll learn a lot using it. It's quite handy. The focus is pretty close, so I'm guessing maybe about the length of this tube. I think it would probably be the the focusing distance. It's got a fixed focus. You can't change the focus. Um, and you can't change the focal length, obviously, it's a fixed, it's a fixed lens. Um, so when you get to about here, it starts to get into focus. Anything further away, it's out of focus. Anything closer um, becomes blurred. And the, the field of view is, looks fairly standard, like, a, like I say, a 50 millimeter view on a, on a standard camera. So it's, a, it's sort of a normal, it's not telephoto, it's not wide angle, it's normal view. So, I think that's all I wanted to talk about on this. Don't buy five meters. No, I must have been thinking of a five meter spider burrow. Dream I had one night. I don't know why I bought five meters. Um, but you might need it. It's, um, it's just a bit of a, it's a bit cumbersome having to lug all this around with you when you're only using you know, that much. Um, I think you can get me one meter, three meters. But well worth it. So let's have a look at some footage. But first, coffee. Hmm. Coffee. Okay. Okay. So, start of the first burrow. What tends to happen is on the outside, the the video is really wobbly because it's really hard to keep the camera steady but once you get inside the burrow it's actually not too bad and pace feed it down very slowly you get a better video if you go nice and slowly with it just try and keep it steady keep your hands steady 
So this is a Lycosa or a wolf spider burrow. No silk lining on the walls at all. And quite interesting, so fairly sort of rugged on the outside of the walls. Not smooth like a lot of Miglamores tend to make burrows that have got um, quite smooth walls. But these burrows, you know, they seem to be used by lots of different spiders. I mean, centipedes go around and they kill the spiders. Um, they'll go to a burrow, they'll kill the spider, eat it, and they'll move to another one. So there's an empty burrow. And, uh, and then spiders that get kicked out of a burrow by a centipede manage to escape. They can then occupy uh, a burrow that's not being used. So that particular, this is another one of that same species you just saw. And these guys are quite... Um, timid they seem to they back right down into the burrow they don't seem to want to attack I think it's a Tasmanicosa species but I'm not entirely sure about this one so these were the non-aggressive ones and they weren't all like this but this is an interesting one now let's just pause it have a look how small this try again I'll just go back have a look how small this is so the burrow was quite wide at the top and then it just immediately just goes down into this little tiny hole. Now this is not typical of wolf spiders. So what do we have? Not a wolf spider. This is quite clearly not a wolf spider. This is a Miglomorph. And in actual fact it's an Anami species. Um, which is a, a wishbone spider. that's in the family Nemesidae and quite common uh, on my property and um, I can tell by the colour of the legs I've seen it plenty of times before they're quite common and interestingly see how it disappeared now wishbone spiders have a, a second entrance chamber but it doesn't go all the way to the top it's like an escape chamber and they're pretty clear that it's using it as an escape chamber in that case And it was common, I noticed that a lot with um, these spiders, that they'll disappear up into a side chamber. If it's there, now if they happen to have been displaced by a centipede and they've taken over the burrow of, say, um, uh, or, uh, a wolf spider, then there won't be that second chamber and they might have to build it. So here's another one. And this one might be an ex-wolf spider hole, I'm not sure. This spider may not have lived here very long because it wasn't very narrow and it didn't seem to escape up into a side chamber. This one also is more typical of a wolf spider. It hasn't got that narrowed section. This is a, this is a fairly small, fairly young looking anami. And it didn't disappear up into a side chamber either. So. I sort of get the impression that this might be a disused wolf spider burrow. You can see eye shine down there. Well, we know it's a we know it's going to be a wolf spider. Wolf spiders have eye shine. This is a very big species. I don't know what species this is from looking at it here. I've only managed to identify a few of the wolf spiders. This one latched onto the camera. Um, and I'm watching the iPad, so it scared the hell out of me because I thought it would come racing up the camera and grabbed me. <laughs> it jumped off and went back down the hole. Another one. They all seem to have this sort of an open end though, like this little living, ch living chamber at the bottom is sort of um, common to all of them. It's another one of these reactive ones, ones that was the type that likes to come after you rather than back off into the corner. Another one with web across the um, the burrow to some degree. This is another anami. You see the orangey coloured legs here. Huge spinnerets. And that one disappeared. So this one probably has a side chamber. Wolf spiders never have a side chamber. Some, some food items and whatnot down at the bottom. And always snails. The burrow is everywhere at the moment. One after the other I can just pick as many burrows as I want. So here's another Anami sitting up, probably thinking what's going on, and vroom, straight down. I'm not hanging around to find out what's going on. And gone. 
So this one would have probably gone up into a side chamber. So yeah, that's it. I hope you learned something. It wasn't too long and too boring. And um, yeah, maybe buy yourself an endoscope. They're pretty useful, really, for the price. So I'll, I'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank you.